I'm building a unique app that combines the structure of a traditional task manager with the immersive gameplay of a life sim. Imagine completing real-world tasks while unlocking rewards and achievements along the way. Sadly, I haven't made as much progress as I would like. I've been working on it for over a year and don't have too much to show for it. I've made a lot of mistakes, some more than once, that have set me back. In this video, I'll share the biggest pitfalls I've encountered so you can hopefully avoid these self-inflicted roadblocks. Probably the biggest thing that's set me back over the past year is I keep switching tech stacks. My original vision for the app was for it to be a web app. You would create an account, log in via a browser, and there would probably be a mobile app that you could also log into your account with as well. All user data would get stored in a cloud that I would be the owner of, the, the controller of. I started building this web application out using Django for my backend and Vue for my frontend. I also have a JavaScript-based game engine called Excalibur. It's the one piece of tech that has actually stayed consistent throughout this entire year. As I was building this out and figuring out all the security that would be needed for creating accounts, I started to realize, I don't like this. I don't like the idea of owning everybody's data. That was one of the biggest reasons why I started using my favorite note-taking app, Obsidian, because all the data is stored locally to whatever device you're using. You can sync your data via their sync service or using things like iCloud, but the source of truth for the data is on your device. I really wanted that for my app, and in order for me to be able to do that, I had to change my approach. So as much as I love Django and Python, I had to ditch it. I also started experimenting with another JavaScript framework called Svelte. This was fun. I really enjoyed how easy it was to get into Svelte. The issues I started running into, though, were I'm not as familiar with Svelte as I am with Vue. Because of that, it really slowed down the development because I was having to learn a new framework. Then I was happy to come across a Vue-based framework called Quasar that has all the tooling and everything necessary for me to create desktop applications and mobile applications with a single code base. And because it's in Vue, it's familiar to me, and I don't have to worry about learning a new framework at the same time that I'm trying to build this app. Another big issue I had was I was all over the place when it came to what I actually was working on. I was excited about this idea of being able to interact with NPCs and stuff on the life sim game, and I started building out a system for NPCs, uh, a dialogue system for NPCs. The biggest problem with this was that I didn't have any sort of base functionality in place. I didn't even have task management, the main part of this app. I was so focused on the fun of, of making a game that I forgot about what the app was even for. I switched to different project management softwares multiple times over the past year. I started off using something called Shortcut, which is a Kanban-based tool. Then I switched over to another tool called Codex based on a comment from one of my viewers. I really liked Codex because it was kind of a gamified project manager, and it felt very fitting to use a gamified project manager to build my gamified task manager. This is the tool I probably use the longest, but then I started getting more into Obsidian and started making videos about it, and I wanted to move all of my project management into a single app. So I moved everything over to Obsidian. As I've been using my setup inside of Obsidian, I've realized there's a lot of things that I miss from Codex, especially the features of being able to run two-week sprints uh, being able to have a set amount of work to get done in a set amount of time. That really helps me to know what to work on and to continue to make progress. That was something that I was missing. Uh, an, an automated way of, of managing that. I also found that Obsidian is actually really great for the brainstorming portion of doing this project. So what I've settled on is I've gone back to using Codex to manage the sprints, the work that needs to get done, and I've continued to use Obsidian for the brainstorming, the idea generation. Using these tools to their strengths has really helped to keep the project organized, and if I ever bring on another developer into the project, all of the management of the tasks will be in a place where I can more easily share it. 
I really like the aesthetic of pixel art, so I started learning how to do it myself, and I s went through a few different designs for characters. I had some characters that kind of looked like the ones from Stardew Valley. I also designed some animal characters that were loosely based on the sprite designs from A Link to the Past. The animals weren't going to work because I wanted you to be able to customize your character in the game, and because animals are so different from each other, it was going to be difficult to make a sets of clothing that would work for all these different kinds of animals. So I switched over to human characters, and as I started getting into the animation, I realized... Wait, I not only have to animate a base sprite, I also have to animate all of the clothing items that they wear. With all the different angles that the characters had to face and all the different actions that the characters were going to be able to do, this was going to take the rest of my life, probably, to create all these different sprites, all these different animations. So I once again went back to the drawing board and I created a much, much simpler design. And instead of doing 16 by 16 tiles for my tile sets, I'm going to an 8 by 8 tile set. That way there's not as much detail that I have to worry about in creating the sprites. The characters, the way that I've designed it, they, I only have to animate two directions rather than four directions, just a left and a right, and them walking around, it looks fine with, without having to see their backs. This made it so much easier as well to create clothing items, and I've now got the code in place to be able to layer those different sprites on top of the base sprite. And soon I'll be able to make it so that in the game you can choose between different clothing items, which the clothing items don't have to have nearly as much detail anymore. I feel like I'm going to be able to actually get all the artwork for this thing created. Another thing to get help me get further down the road is I found a free tile set, a ranch themed tile set that is 8x8 pixels for each of the tiles. It's a royalty free one. I can take it and use it in commercial projects and I can modify it as much as I need to. This will help me get way further down the road and will also help me so much as I'm still in the prototyping phase. I feel I'm now at a place where I can stop worrying about all these logistical details that have been bogging me down. Now that I've got all these things figured out, that my development speed has, has already greatly increased. And that's something that I hope I, I can keep up into the new year. My goal is to have something functional enough for people to start testing about, about halfway through 2025. That may be overly ambitious, but I want to stretch myself and push to get that done. Thank you so much to all of you who have watched this video to the end. Now, here's some videos that YouTube thinks you might want to watch next. Enjoy.